welcome back to another epic video. This is gonna be pretty freaking awesome. Um, by the end of this video, we are gonna hear this turbo spool. Stay tuned. Okay, so in the last video you would have seen, I put the headers on and we got the kind of the exhaust set up, took the old stuff off, got the new headers on, got the turbo put on, but now we're gonna start with oiling the turbo. Okay, so the oiling setup, this is gonna be really tough to see, but the alternator goes right here. I already removed it, it sits right here. Maybe I'll get underneath the truck and see, but you can see the oil filter uh, opening or threaded port right there. Took that off, and then the, the oil pressure switch is right there. You can see the plug hanging right here. Maybe I'll get underneath the truck, see if we can see it a little better. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, guys, but the port's right there, right by the tip of my finger. That's where the oil pressure sensor threads into. I did already remove it out of there. I'll show you what I have up on the bench. So this is kind of the setup that I went with. This is obviously the oil pressure switch. This is a an eighth inch NPT T with two females and one male. And then this is an adapter to a 4AN, which will go to the uh, stainless braided line. And so I'm gonna thread this guy into that port and then run the line up to the top of the turbo. There's the oil set up. You can see the braided line coming out of the T running around and it goes up underneath on the side of the alternator. All right, then we're up here on top, braided line. Braided line's running right here. And up and zipped it, zip tied it off here so it can't rub and chafe. And then right up to the top of the turbo. That's just a 4AN uh, connector there on the top. Before we actually run this, we'll take this off and make sure that uh, we get good oil flow. Okay, now for oil drain. I picked up this kit, um, it's from Vibrant. It's a nice kit, came with pretty much everything you need to set it up. This does have a 45, I already assembled the one side. It's my first time using this stuff, so I wanted to make sure and test try it and see how it worked. So that went on nice. This will go down at the bottom on the oil pan uh, fitting. And then obviously give you 20 inches of braided line, uh, another straight uh, connector. Then from the straight connector, it goes to, uh, this is a 10 AN to a, pipe thread and this is the flange that goes in the bottom of the turbo they do give you some bolts for that and then a couple of bungs which i ordered my bungs separate because this took a little longer to get here and i wanted to make sure that i was able to get the pan welded up and everything early so yeah this is the full kit uh, uh pretty nice setup so i'm gonna get this guy threaded onto the oil pan okay there's the fitting coming into the oil pan right here threaded in it's a little bit snug i had to kind of move some of this stuff this is the starter wiring and to move it around but we got it to fit, runs up through, and I'll go up top and show you up there. Okay, here we are up top. You can see it kind of goes down next to the uh, AC compressor down there and comes up right to the bottom of the where the turbo is going to be. So it should fit up pretty nice. It's like I said, it's 10 a.m., so it should have plenty of flow. Turbo is all bolted in. I've got the oil feed on, and then there's the drain. Come down out of the bottom, so everything is all connected now. I did. One thing you want to do is make sure you have flow, so I stuck this and in a, in a bottle and then pull my fuel pump fuse and then just cranked it over. Made sure I had flow here. And then once I did that, I put a cup underneath the drain in the bottom and then did the same thing. Made sure I got oil flow through the turbo. So that's all good to go. So now I think the next step is I'm going to get the wastegate hooked up. It goes on this flange right here. So I get that guy put on there and then I can start laying out the exhaust and kind of seeing where everything's going to go. Okay, for the wastegate, I did get the 38 millimeter precision wastegate, so go ahead and get this guy out of the box. All right, so here's the uh, wastegate. Comes with a couple of flanges, so if you're making your own custom thing, you've got those. Your mounting hardware and gaskets. Uh, your banjo fittings for your airline. The wastegate itself, 38 millimeter, and then all of your various springs to set up for whatever PSI. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is start out with four PSI. Not very much, just uh, I am in stock fuel injectors, stock fuel pump, and stock ECU. So we gotta go with that. So I'm gonna start out with four PSI and see what happens. I got the downpipe bolted to the wastegate. Uh, it is gonna be open to atmosphere. I do wanna route it back in, but right now I'm just gonna run it open. I went with a little bit better wastegate. I just wanna go precision, like a name brand one. Cause this is kind of your like do or die. If this thing fails, you could over boost and Bad news. So I did spend a little more on that. This is where you could save a little bit of money if you wanted to. A lot of guys that are run eBay ones and they're fine. No problems with them. 
but again this is i wanted to spend a little bit of money here and get the little better one so we're gonna go ahead and get this guy bolted onto the manifold all right there's a waste gate i just have it temporarily bolted in right now um i wanted to see where this that's the down pipe down there to that's the down pipe running down to the ground or i mean underneath the truck then you can see the, the v band down there that's the stock exhaust i bolted that guy back on so now I can kind of start laying out where the downpipe is going to go and sneak down through here. I'll have to do a little bit of work for the dipstick tube. I think I can bend that a little bit and get that up into this area out of the way. So that's the next step is to kind of get the downpipe laid out and start putting that together. So for the actual downpipe, uh, I picked up this little kit on eBay. It's stainless. They give you a couple of bends uh, on a 90. It's two and a half inch stainless. Should work pretty good. And then I have a flange that will bolt to the back of the turbo housing with a gasket, a flex joint uh, that obviously just to give us a little bit extra wiggle room in there and the other half of the V-band for to connect to this factory exhaust. There's a bung inside of the Innovate box that's going to be for the wide band and I did install the Innovate gauge already. This guy right here does boost and AFR so that'll be nice. Once we get it going then I'll be able to kind of keep an eye on things. Next step's going to be start kind of laying this out, cutting it up and Making a downpipe. Okay, so after about two and a half, three hours, this is what I came up with. So this bolts up to the turbo up here, runs down with a 90 into the flex joint, runs down, kind of does a little zigzag, and then bolt or uh, goes to the V-band to the factory exhaust. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this guy up and then I'll show you what it looks like inside the truck. Okay, downpipe is all welded up. Uh, looks like the next step is going to be I have to weld in the sensor for the wide band. Uh, the, with Innovate, they give you a bung for that. So I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole. I just kind of set this in the truck, seeing where it would fit well. Right here is going to be a good spot to kind of face out towards the fender area. There's a rubber piece that'll go over top of it, so it'll be protected. I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole for that, get that guy welded in, and I can get this guy bolted in. Okay, getting ready to put the downpipe in. I got laying up here on the intake. I just want to show one thing. Um, this is the dipstick for the transmission. It normally comes out like right here. I went underneath and I bent it on the transmission pan and then I cut the bracket off that bolts to the engine over here. And then I got it back in there. I'm gonna have to figure out a way, maybe a bracket to come up with to kind of hold it against the engine somewhere in here. But it's out of the way for the downpipe to go in. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt that guy in. All right, I'm inside the fender here, or the, the wheel well. There's a downpipe right here. I did wrap it off camera. So I wrapped that guy and this is the uh, wideband sensor. There's a rubber piece that goes in here that protects that. So that'll look nice and uh, neat. And then up top, here is the downpipe. I just gotta get some of these wires back off the exhaust. There it is kind of going down. Turned out really nice. I'm actually really happy with it. Next step is going to be Got some vacuum lines to run and then uh, intercooler piping. We'll start working on that. So it's a few days later. Uh, I had to wait for some parts, uh, some silicone joiners and whatnot. So I did get the intercooler mounted. I came up with a couple of brackets here and there to mount it. Um, and then I did drill a couple of three inch holes, one there and one down here. I got one of the silicone joiners in there, one here. So I was gonna come out, go down. This one's gonna come straight out of the turbo and head this way and then a couple up here. So I'm gonna get started on that. All right, so I got the setup coming out of the turbo. I've got a 90 silicone joiner there. This is all two inch and two inch into the intercooler. So that turned out really nice. I think it fits really well. So now I have to figure out this side. This side's gonna be a little more of a challenge. I, gotta, I don't have much room here. So I've got the AC uh, part there. So I gotta kind of figure this out. Okay, so I got this side figured out. I got the two inch 90. Going down, it's kind of hard to see. I had to, there's two bolts in this. I took the bottom bolt out and kind of kicked it over. I might have to drill a new hole and remount that because I just kick it over just a little bit. And then in here, and this is on the back side of the, um, it's on the back side coming through down there. Uh, that'll come through and it steps up from two inch to two and a half, which is the kit that I have that has the intercooler piping. So I'm gonna cut this here and put a joiner here. And then it's gonna come up. This is the mass airflow sensor. Uh, housing. I had to cut that out of the air box and then I was able to trim it back and fit over to a three inch, two and a half to three. Then it goes three inch, three inch around. And this is actually two and three quarters going into the throttle body. So it kind of steps down a little bit, not much. 
uh, and then obviously it's a joiner there. So yeah, that's pretty much all I need to do is cut this, join these two pieces, and then I gotta sort out some vacuum lines. Piping's all done. I had one blue connector. I think it's ugly. I want to get a black one. That's pretty easy to do. Uh, runs again from here, runs up. This is where my mass airflow sensor housing is. Got a two and a half to three. Did have to use some hose clamps. I gotta order a few more T-bolt clamps. So now I have to, because my mass airflow sensor plug is here, so I'm actually pulling the loom apart and seeing if I can make it run around and come up, up to here where the mass airflow sensor is gonna be. Okay, so it looks like it was pretty simple. This goes down to the igniter, which is down here on the, the fender. So I had to separate these two looms. And actually it's pretty easy. I just pulled the uh, looming back on it. And then this piece goes over to here and this section comes up to where the mass airflow sensor is going to be. So I'm gonna rewrap this all in electrical tape because it was wrapped up from the factory. Do that on both of these. And then I got some extra loom for this leg coming off over to here. I'm gonna go ahead and get that all done. That way it'll look nice and neat and pretty much factory. Okay, so here's a loom that I kind of came up with for my mass airflow sensor. Just kind of runs up and then plugs right into the mass airflow sensor right here. Uh, next thing I gotta do is just run the vacuum line. This is for the fuel pressure regulator. It's actually on the back side of the engine over there. All you have to do is just tee that into a manifold pressure source, meaning vacuum or boost. That fuel pressure regulator will do a one-to-one -one, uh, pressure rise with boost. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then I think we're ready to start it up. Okay, here's the line. This actually came out of the front of the uh, intake manifold up here. Just a hose that, or a steel pipe that runs underneath the manifold back to the fuel pressure regulator back here. I just teed off there, came up, and then teed into this uh, hose right here. It's kind of temporary. I need to get the right size vacuum. This is like a little bit too small, so I'll have to run and grab some. But this will work just to spire it up. But I think we're ready to start it up. All right, here we go. First start. Oh, it seems to idle okay. Everything seems quiet. I don't hear any weird exhaust leaks or anything like that. But I kind of warm up for a minute. Oh, it's been sitting here idling for a few minutes. And it's kind of warming up. A little bit of smoke is coming off of just the things that had oil on them and whatnot. Everything looks okay right now. Uh, as far as I can tell, no weird leaks or anything like that. I want to see if we get a little bit of flutter. <laughs> that makes some cool noises. Okay guys, it's been a few days since the last clip that you've seen. I have drove the truck a little bit, just kind of seeing what was going to go on. A couple of issues I ran into. Um, I did have a little bit of an oil leak at the turbo side of the feed line. Turns out just a little bit loose. They will tighten that up a little bit. That was fine, a little bit of a seepage around there. Did have my air filter set up. I didn't really care for, so I switched it up, which uh, I can show you guys. So I did that a little bit differently, set that up the way I wanted it. So now I kinda wanna take you guys for a little bit of a ride. But as far as everything goes, CX Racing stuff seems to be holding up just fine. The downpipe, everything's working fine there. The way the intercooler piping and everything is ran, that fit nice. I got everything to fit behind the grill, so it looks like it's pretty OEM. You can't even tell it's there. I'll give you a little bit of a shot of the front of the truck before the end of the video, but I wanted to take you guys for a little bit of a ride so you can hear it. Sounds pretty cool with the open wastegate tube. Definitely is different. I've rode in some other turbo vehicles that didn't have that. So this is my first time experiencing it with an open wastegate tube. Uh, I'm going to tie it back in eventually, but it's fun for now. But yeah, I'm going to take you guys for a little bit of a ride so you can hear the uh, turbo flutter and spooling and whatnot. All right, so here's my air filter set up. I just found one of these black plastic elbows at AutoZone. Actually, it worked out really nice. Went from two and three quarters up to three inch, and then a three inch uh, AEM filter in there. And then as far as the inner core goes, it's tucked nice and neat behind the grill. That turned out really nice. Everything else seems to be holding up, so let's go for a ride. All right, I'll give you a little bit of a hit here. See what happens, so you can hear it. so good i'm not running a blow-off valve and i know that that is somewhat of an interesting topic on the internet 
so far so good. I don't think it really hurts anything. Um, hasn't hurt anything. I, I've probably put maybe three or 400 miles on it now since I finished it and everything seems to be fine. But I mean, it's just so addicting. It's, it is getting a little bit better gas mileage if you can keep your foot out of it. Maybe a mile or two to the gallon better, just reading off of the scan gauge that I have. But I mean, it's just hard not to hear this. That gets so addicting. But man, this thing's a lot of fun, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any uh, questions you have down in the comments. I know there'll probably be quite a bit and there's tons of different ways to do this process, but so far so good. It's actually nice. You just cruise down the road and it's quiet, hooked up to the factory exhaust. I am going to do something different with that eventually down the road and I'm only making about two pounds of boost right now. So I may have a boost leak or something like that. So I need to check that. And I'm going to hook up a possibly one of those manual little cheap little boost controllers just to kind of see where I'm at, if I can get it up a little bit or change the, the spring in the uh, wastegate. But yeah, anyways, guys, this thing's been a lot of fun. You're gonna see more videos on it. I'm not done with it because this is just too addicting. It's just fun. It's so good. But anyways, guys, go ahead and uh, subscribe, like this video and share it with your friends. And I hope I can help you guys out and have a little bit of fun at the same time. So uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. So far, so good. No check engine lights either. Pulling through the factory math, I'm gonna give you a, a zero to a 55 or something like that. It sounds so good, it's so much fun. But hard to keep your foot out of when you can hear that spool.